have made it to San Gimignano. Mark's very excited about it because he actually built it himself on the computer. And uh, we're going to have a look now. San Gimignano is a medieval town in the middle of Tuscany. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and most of its architecture is still really well preserved. Getting into the walled city was a bit tricky though, as the historical centre is car free and we had to cut our luggage, the kids and a stupidly heavy travel bed quite a fair way uphill to our Airbnb. But we did it, even though I may have felt like murdering someone by the time we made it to our accommodation. It's nice having a car free town, it's not so nice when you've got luggage. <laughs> To bring up. Suzanne went to the dark side. I did. I lost it. I was like, okay. You girls no longer have a mother. The town up on a hill can be spotted from miles away, as it is inundated with medieval towers, which also gave it a nickname of Manhattan of the Middle Ages. There are 14 of the original 72 towers and tower houses remaining, and we happened to spend the night right underneath one. This is our Airbnb. We're sort of um, in a very old building, and it is fairly big, isn't it? I'll walk you through. Living room, and there's a big kitchen, and the dining area, and the windows are just into the stairwell. <laughs> And then there's sort of a little middle room with a um, library. Here is bedroom number one. Hang on, I'm going to turn on the light. This is Izzy's bedroom. And here is bedroom number two. I'm going to turn on the light as well. This is mine and Mark's and Clara's. And then we've got a pretty fancy bathroom. <laughs> Don't we, Clara? A pretty fancy bathroom. I'll show you what the fancy bit is. There's a shower, but the fancy bit comes here. Look. Look at that. <laughs> what? Look at that. Where are you going? The afternoon was spent outside, exploring gardens and deep dark wells and probably going past the 5th Torture Museum in just as many minutes. How many torture museums are there? As the evening approached and the light grew softer on the rolling hills surrounding the town, our tummies also began to rumble. We made it easy on ourselves and just went with a takeaway pizza. Mr. Brickle, yep. what do you reckon so far? Look. Suzanne said it's not that big a place, <laughs> but if you're interested in um, medieval Romanesque architecture, then the feeling you will have here will be positively euphoric. <laughs> um, and I am interested in medieval Romanesque architecture. And there was plenty of it to see. We spent the rest of the evening at the piazzas of the city, letting the children run free and watching the town grow a bit quieter as the last of the day trippers slowly disappeared. Off she goes. Clara. Clara. <laughs> There's Mum. There's Mum. Hey. This is typical Clara behaviour. She cannot be restrained. She can be restrained. I'll show you. Ready? Let's go. Three, two, one. Strain. <laughs> it's not a duck, it's a pigeon. See, when you stay still, they come closer. But she quickly was up and about again, climbing those steps for the 50th time. And Izzy pretended to be a ballerina, dancing her little heart out just before bedtime. And we are having some breakfast now, and then we're heading off to Verona. And that will conclude our Italy trip. The drive to Verona went smoothly, with Izzy mostly entertaining herself and Clara happily sleeping away for a while. Oh, hi. Once there, we were greeted by some rabbits that lived in the garden of our new accommodation. 
I specifically chose this place because of it, as I knew the girls would absolutely love it. A little gentle, Clara, gentle. Yeah, and let's just look, there's a mini one coming behind you, is he? Here we are, we made it to Verona. Izzy is happy about the rabbits here and Clara is happy about the bulls. <laughs> We're only going to be here for two days, three nights, because um, Mark's got some, a friend here who he's been talking to learning Italian from. So um, that's why we're here. I felt very comfortable at this place from the get-go. It was more like a family home than a holiday accommodation. There he goes, Dad's going up to meet with a friend and we're going to feed the rabbits with some carrots. Do you want mommy to carry some? Um, that's it. Right. I'm fine. What I'm are we doing now? Uh, we're going to feed the rabbits. Yes. The carrots. Okay, here we go. That is the carrot breakfast for the rabbits. Oh, I can already see them. Clara here got sick yesterday with a fever. She's doing a bit better today, but we're still pretty hot this morning. Um, but I'm going to show you the place quickly. So at the moment we've got all our stuff here, but this is the entrance. Ah oh, ha ha! And from there you go off into a massive living room. Two little balconies either side. It's pretty, isn't it? Living room, and then you can go through from here through to the kitchen and dining area. Back out to the entrance. Then we've got a little bedroom here. Here is Clara and my bedroom. A bathroom. Even with a sick kid, it's actually really nice here. So last night Mark went out to meet with one of his friends from the language exchange. Um, she just had a new baby so we couldn't go because obviously the kids have been a bit sick and we didn't want to make the baby sick so Mark went on his own. And I just hang out here but Izzy didn't sleep, go to sleep for ages because she had a nap in the car. So it was Izzy and me <laughs> um, having a chat, having some food. It was nice. And right now I'm going to make some lunch and then I'm going to feed these kids and then Clara at least will have a nap and then we're going to go out and have a look at Verona. Because we only have today, tomorrow we're going to go back to Germany. So off we went to explore our last Italian city before heading back to Germany. And it was a pretty one, like they all are really. Here we are in the old town of Verona. Yet another UNESCO World Heritage Site for its urban structure and architecture. So as most cities in Europe go, this is an old one, with a rich history that can be seen everywhere around us. Something I did really like about these old places in Italy was that yes, they did preserve their heritage, but at the same time also kept using these incredibly old buildings and structures, just as they would any other in their day-to-day -day life. I think this might be one of the reasons everything just felt so alive here. As it was our last day in Italy, we did treat ourselves to one more ice cream, which Izzy was stoked about. And after an early dinner or late afternoon snack, depending on how you want to look at it, we found ourselves a nice shady spot in a little park with an impressive view. Is that good? We're right in front of the arena right now. And I honestly have never ever seen anything like it. The arena is a Roman amphitheatre and is the third largest in the whole of Italy. 
Even though a lot of the original outside facade is no longer there, we were told that the interior is very impressive and virtually intact. And as I said earlier about Italy's relationship to their heritage, it remains in use even today for public events. It's just clean, tidy, beautiful colours on the buildings. It looks very nice. And then having a little rest. It's hot. I got Clara's hair wet. Fair enough. Ah! Look at it go! Looks like a mad professor. <laughs> to Juliet's balcony with yeah. you. That's correct. So now I'm upset. Suzanne's upset. Just wanted to have a little look. Yeah, at what? <laughs> Obviously, I, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but Romeo and Juliet's not a true story. It's written by some guy in England, I forget his name. <laughs> and um, he never even came to Verona. And um, Juliet's balcony's something that's not real about something else that wasn't real. And Suzanne wanted to go and us that didn't. Here we are. Yeah. You know, with our dignity intact. <laughs> There's your belly. And the belly button. Yeah. Yes, mummy's belly is there. Mummy's belly. Can you go and give dad a big cuddle? Big cuddle for dad? Ah. Ah. Big cuddle for mum? Aww. Well, here we are, back home. Bedtime for Clara. Dad and Izzy, they are relaxing down there. And tomorrow we're heading back towards Germany. We're going through Austria, through the Alps, and um, we're going to stay somewhere in the south of Germany. Good morning. Well, this is it. We are almost packed and we are leaving Verona and also Italy. We're going through Austria today into the south of Germany and then we've got a little stay somewhere in the mountains a bit higher up but hopefully not a stupidly rainy road. Parking is supposed to be easy. So and that's going to be our last night on the road and then the following day we'll be back home with my dad in Chemnitz. We've made it back to Germany. There's a bit of a mountain view. We've got a little room we share tonight. And um, things are back to normal. <laughs> well, you're a bit... All right, well, you're maybe we can turn it back up huh? the right way. Is she going to run away again? Yeah. Oh, next one. Got another one. Got another one. <laughs> All right, let's go for a mini walk before we go for dinner. I love you. I give you everything you want me to. Think about it. If I could, I'd burn down the moon. survived the night just and now we're going to pack up everything and we're driving home to Chemnitz which is about it says four and a half hours so I'm thinking maybe five and a half or six hours for us because we need to stop but we'll see maybe we'll be faster 
Yeah, All right, right, we have made it back home. We're back in cabinets. Yeah. Mark's setting up um, his little workstation there. I will see you all in probably two to three weeks. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> oh, we're stuffering it. It was a long drive, this one. And the kids just slept at different times, so there was never a real mm. break. <laughs> That's good because I was constantly occupied. Uh, that's pretty happy here looking at the books she hasn't seen in ages. And Izzy is um, outside with Orpi with her granddad. They went um, to the shop and that, and now they're visiting Orpi, who unfortunately is in hospital. We're getting ourselves settled in again, and I will see you next time, I believe, um, from the medieval little spectacle nearby um, at the little fortress in Rabenstein. So you can look forward to that. 